And here we are, the agent of change at your service, right here to do this advice column, actually on Tuesday this time for a change. Welcome to the show, everybody. I saw everybody getting all warmed up in the chat room earlier. You guys hyping each other up and getting ready for this craziness. I love it, though. Thanks for sharing the link. Those of you who went out and shared on your social media right quick to remind, because sometimes, you know, people have every intention of coming to the show and then they forget they get caught up in something else. So sometimes your posts, you know, remind them. So it's always a good thing. Thanks, you guys. So here we are on another Tuesday. First of all, I want to show you one of my birthday presents. I forgot to show you guys this. Um, it's this case, right? And, it, you know, you open up the little case and look what it has in it. Makeup brushes. Now, I'm sure Lady Boss knows more about what to do to, with all of these than me. But I was just thrilled to have it. Don't ask me what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to just be doing more of what I did last year, what I call playing in the dots. Because I didn't know what I was doing. So I was playing in makeup and every show I had a different look. <laughs> ah. So let's see what happens when you guys see me next time when I actually start using them. You love makeup? I've just really discovered it because I grew up as what they used to call a tomboy. You know, with my brothers, I was busy chasing around with them. I wasn't trying to be like all super girly and stuff. And uh, all the cousins in my age group, except for one, uh, were guys, you know, were boys. So when I wanted to play something at family gatherings and stuff, they had to play with the little girls or, you know, play with the boys. And they would do sports and stuff like that. So that's what I grew up doing. And I wasn't really too, you know, concerned about makeup and stuff and hair and all that. You see, I'm still not doing into doing my hair at all. And I'm just really doing makeup just, just starting really last year so. Late bloomer here, late, super late. So let's get started with our questions. We've been having 22 for the last month or so. And yep, that's her new, I guess that's the new normal. One time she gave me 25 though, but I acted a fool so bad. I guess she cut it back down to 22, which is way and didn't, more than enough. You know, I looked at the show last year and I was complaining because I had 16. I was like, stupid girl, you should have just shut up. You would have been happy with that. So let's go, okay, you guys? This is Tuesday. What the fuck Tuesday for September 1st, 2020? Can you believe it's already September? Question number one. This is from a male in the 26 to 29 age group from Auckland, New Zealand. Oh, and I forgot to say two, two things. One, this is not the show where you get your question answered here. You, these questions are submitted in advance. And number two, if you want to submit a question for a future show, look in the show description down below. Lady Boss will be intermittently posting, you know, where you can find the form so you can submit your question for an upcoming What the Fuck Tuesday. Okay, back to the column. 26 to 29 male from Auckland, New Zealand. So I've been dating this girl for a month and a half, once or twice a week. She asked me if I was seeing other girls within two weeks of us getting together. I told her yes. She seemed a bit upset, and I explained that she can't expect to be exclusive so soon. Anyways, I know she really likes me, and we have a really good time together, but this happened today. So we was out to play pool, and next to our table were two guys. We were probably played for two hours. We were drinking and kissing, and she also tried to distract me a few times by kissing me while it was my turn to shoot. And when I went to the washroom for the last time, one of the dudes sang culture as my date. Interesting approached her to ask for her phone number. As soon as I came back, she told me that the guy had approached her. I thought she was testing me, but she said she was serious. As I found this really insulting, I went to the guy and asked him about his business. He said they were both from the same country and just wanted to be friends. We left after that, and after a few minutes of discussing the matter, I wasn't upset at all about her, but about the situation where the guy clearly saw we were dating her together. Because we weren't exclusive, she admitted on the way back home she handed her phone to the guy so he could enter his contact info. I was just profoundly insulted and told her I would drop her back home and leave. I told her that even though we are not exclusive, accepting the approaches of another guy while on a date is unacceptable. It's not like she was walking to the restroom in a nightclub and some random guy stopped her on the way. We've been playing next to these guys for the past two hours. The good thing is that she told me how bad it is that she simply could hand over her phone in the hands of another guy while I was taking a piss. She's now sending me messages that she's very sorry and doesn't want this to be the end. What are your thoughts? My thought is 
you are getting what you deserve. Let me tell you how this works, son. When you, a woman asks you, are you seeing anyone else? That means that she doesn't want you to see anybody else. She wants you to just see her, okay? Now, what you did was, well, you know, you can't expect it to be so soon as that, which is actually true, right? That is true. But you saying it that way without couching it into some other kind of way that might give her, you know, like not hurt her feelings, not make her feel rejected. So you just made the green light for her to do whatever the fuck she wanted to do with whoever she wanted to do it with me, right? Because that's what you're doing. So you have no right to say nothing. Now, admittedly, I probably would have done that, but not told you. Because it's not your business what somebody else did when you've got other women that's all up in your life and all up in your bed. You see what I'm saying? So she only did that to get your attention. She's stupid. She shouldn't have told you nothing. Just dealt with the other guy didn't just like she was dealing with you because neither one of you, you know, she's not committed to you and neither are you to her. So I don't have a problem with it personally. I just, you know, the only problem, like I said, I have is that she told you because had you, she not said a word, you would have never known the difference. And you just been living your happy life, dating your other people, just like she is. You kill me with this. How are you going to step to somebody when you got other women in the wing? Ain't going to step to some dude and talk shit to him. You you tripping. You lucky he was nice and didn't deck your ass. Try to talk smack. She would have asked you, is that your girlfriend? And you would have said no. Well, then what you tripping for, Holmes? And then you would have gone in his face and said something else. And then he would have, boop. And then that would have been the end of that because you didn't have no business saying nothing. You wanted to not be committed. Right? It's too soon, you said. So this is what's called getting a taste of your own medicine. I can see you didn't like it very much. You say it was insulting. You said a whole bunch of stuff. But you know what? It don't matter because you that's not your girl. And if she can find somebody else that does her, does her better than what you do, just like you have some other women you trying to figure out if they're going to do you better than what she does. See, you set this dynamic in motion up. You set this in motion, sir. So there's nothing you can say. So that's just the way it is. Well, you know, he, I mean, I'm telling you, he did that shit in the wrong neighborhood, in the wrong pool hall. He would have got straight clocked. He's stepping up to no brother who's up, you know, t- trying to talk to you. See, it's your, y'all ain't a couple. I mean, it's like you wasn't kissing her. She was kissing you. You said that in here. So that shows a very different dynamic than the relationship. And any man who's street savvy is going to pick up on that. Even as a woman, I know that. If a man is kissing all over this, the woman, that means he's he likes her a lot. If she's kissing all over him, all hugged up over him and leaned all over him, and he's not really reciprocating, he's taking it, but he's not really initiating himself, that's also a very telltale sign, and that means that she's open. She's, she's on the market still because he ain't really feeling her like that. She's something to do. So be very careful with the messages that you send. You got some dude who's street smart and knows what's up. He going to hone in on a girl, especially if he thinks she's something that he might want to be interested in. You ain't doing shit about it, so he did. I don't give a shit if that's how. If, but you tell me we ain't committed and watch how I, what, what I do. You, I mean, don't say nothing. I'm going to dance with everybody I want to dance with. I'm going to accept drinks from everybody I want to accept drinks with. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do because I don't have a commitment with you. We, don't, we aren't da- in dating. We just, as we used to call it in the 90s, kicking it. And you can kick it with people platonically. You can kick it with people that you're sleeping with. You can kick it with your ex. You can kick it with your cousins. You can kick it with your next door neighbor. You can kick it with your brothers. You can kick it with a whole bunch of people, but it don't mean shit. As far as romance goes. So, you know, dude, this was a valuable lesson for him. He needed this. He needs to. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Robin. That is true, huh? And it's still early because it'll probably be over two something by the time we really get into the show. Y'all need to hit that like button. Stop being stingy. This is really sad. So those are my thoughts. Get over it. Question number two, female. 26 to 29 out of Southern California. Hi, Deb. I'm a 26-year-old female who just got out of a seven-year relationship. Girl, that is too long. My partner was 21 years older. Throughout the relationship, I was manipulated, gaslighted, and emotionally abused. He flirted with girls while drunk, drank a lot, and even did drugs. Upon meeting, I was in a really bad spot in my life and just went spent so long with him, and the years flew by. 
Now I'm really sad that I wasted all those years I can't get back. And it wasn't even someone who was a good person. Eventually, I realized I was disgruntled with his habits, his age, and we ended up having no eggplant. It was like I woke up and finally realized that we just didn't work. Though I'm taking my time to evaluate and collect the pieces, I can't stop kicking myself for wasting all those years on him. Any advice for a woman unsure of how to set boundaries and properly vet men? Thanks in advance. That's a tall order for a little letter like this, but I can refer you to, there's a video here called Vetting Men. It's all about how to vet men. There's videos about um, self-esteem and how to make smarter choices. There's videos about boundaries. I think it's a two or three series set. Plus, I had some guests talking about boundaries. So what I suggest is you go to the show page where it says, you know, the videos and they have a search box type boundaries, for instance. And all the videos with that in the title will pop up. Start watching. You go back and you type all the videos about vetting or vet men or something like that. All the videos with that will, will pop up and watch them all. Because you need to learn how to stop wasting time on men that aren't going to do any good for you. And then my final recommendation is you watch the new three video series called What's In It For Me. That on top of vetting is like a, it's like an, uh, uh, another level of vetting because you, you know, you have to get through the basic part first. But then after that, I mean, so he makes a cut. He meets what I call the MQs, right? You know, right height, right waist, right weight, you know, income, talks to you nice, takes you nice. You know, okay, those are the MQs. He's single, he ain't married, you know, no miscellaneous kids everywhere. He's educated. Okay, oh, so he's got the MQs, the standard issue MQs. What does he do with them? How does he treat you? That's when what's in it for me starts to come into play. So it's like level two vetting. So you watch all of those and I think you'll be in a good place. Okay. Let's move on to question number three. Female 18 to 21 out of Richmond, Virginia. Me and my boyfriend have been dating for seven months and we've known each other for a year. We were supposed to go out on a date tomorrow. Oh, I wonder when she wrote this. He didn't text me all day yesterday. So I texted him last night and asked, are we still on for Saturday? I didn't receive a text back. So I called him and asked him, did he see my text? He proceeded to say my phone is off and I didn't get anything, which is a lie. His phone couldn't have been off because my message delivered. So he told me to text him again. So I texted him and I said, I already know you saw my text. I don't even worry about it. That was three hours ago. He still has not, hasn't texted me back. What should I do? Does he not want to be with me anymore? Should I give him space? Why is he acting weird? I need answers, please. Oh, yeah, what you do is you block him. You did too much. Okay, you're supposed to, you don't ask me and what, you, know, you don't just, you were like chasing him to ask him, are we still on and all this kind of stuff. That's not how you do. You, if you have a date, I mean, you know, you get ready to some kind of level, but you always have a backup plan for people who are flaky like this. And then when he don't show up, you go out on, you know, plan, you go with plan B. I'm telling you, that's how you got to do them because that's, that's the only thing they understand. And then, if you know, you don't worry about texting him. You don't worry about where he is. You don't worry about if he got your text. You don't worry about any of that kind of stuff with men. You don't do that. You send your text if you want to, and then after that, you let it go, and you move on and do what you need to do for yourself to make yourself happy. You do not worry about a man. And I'm telling you, you know, I mean, I don't know about this at all stuff. I mean, how often do people text? I must be out the loop. That gets on my nerves. I don't really like texting, so I don't really want to text you all damn day. And, you know, one text a day is, is like my max, and that's pretty much every other day is even better. But... um. You know, you didn't get a text back. Okay, that's the point at which you were supposed to stop. You don't text and you don't call. You don't chase. You don't ask questions. You make other plans. That's what you do. So then by the time he gets around to showing his face or whatever and says, oh, well, you know, I thought we was going. I said, no, you know, I didn't hear from you. So I made other plans. That's how you do him. That's how you do dudes like that. And then you just leave him standing there looking stupid. Okay. That's what you do. 
I don't know these, but she's young. She, she's only the 18 to 21 age group, so they don't know yet. That's why I'm trying to educate her. That's not how you do things. You don't ever let a man see you sweat and begging him for your time, for his time or his attention. You never, ever, ever do that. Ever. Never. Okay, I hope I, you understand what never means. Your fingers should rot off before you do that. Question number four, female, 26 to 29 out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. My fiancé and I have been together for seven years. He recently proposed. Well, he should have. Asshole, waiting seven years. That's damn near a decade. Before we got engaged, I got along with both sides of his family. His parents are divorced. But now his mom's side seems determined to split us up. Hmm, interesting. When we announced our engagement to his mom's side, she asked to speak to me alone, where she proceeded to tear me apart. She told me I wasn't good enough for her son, that I would hold him back in life, and that I should have never said yes. She claimed that he was too consumed by lust to think rationally, and when he finally, quote, got it out of his system, he would divorce me. She said it would be better and less expensive for both of us if I walked away now. My fiancé is very close to his mom, and I didn't want to upset him, so I never mentioned the conversation. That's a mistake. His half-sister is 24, and his stepsister is 29. They've been making snide remarks about me constantly. They've implied that I'm a gold digger, a shit something, and manipulative. The younger one has outright told me I wasn't going to last much longer. I'm confused on why they're behaving this way as we used to be close. Yesterday, my fiancé asked me to check something on his phone for him, and when I unlocked it, the messages were his mother were open. He, she was telling him that I was cheating on him and that her friends had seen me with another man. Wow. She kept insisting he had to leave me and that he deserved better. My fiancé shut her accusation down, but I'm still so hurt and angry. I don't know what I've done to make his family hate me so much suddenly. His family means a lot to him, and I'm terrified they'll actually convince him to end things with me. Is there anything I can do to make them stop without ruining my relationship? Nope. Leave it alone. Stay out of it. This is between him and his crazy-ass relatives. Most likely what they're afraid of is if he marries you, whatever they've been tapping him for money-wise will dry up because he'll be married then and trying to start his own family, and he won't be giving them money and writing them checks like he's been doing. That's that. I don't know. That's what I'm getting from this. They're afraid to lose something that he's, he's, he's of value to them in some way, and they're afraid to lose that gravy train. So here they are picking on you, but I could tell you one thing. You know, when they want to get started with that stuff, you have a choice. You can sit there and listen to it, or you can walk the fuck off. Then his mother trying to corner you and tell you some bullshit, you're supposed to say, stop. I don't want to hear this simple shit. You're talking crazy, lady. I'm out. And then you walk away. You don't sit there and let her berate and demean you like that. And in case, you know, you might not want to say all that because, you know, that's your his, aunt, his mama and you... um. You know, want to show respect and all that stuff. But see, I only respect people that respect me. And once she would have started with that bullshit and t telling me about myself and it's only lust, say, yeah, you just jealous because ain't nobody lusting after your old ass. But, you know, if his lust lasts seven years, I'd say that's a pretty good bet, don't you? And that's what, if that gets him excited enough to want to marry it, then what's, the, what's your problem? You know, that's what men get married for anyway, pussy. I have the pussy and you don't. Is that what's making you so upset? I would just talk shit to her. You know, you don't have to cuss her, but you just talk crazy to her. In which case, she would just be sitting there dumbfounded and not know what to say because you'd just be coming out of left field like you dropped off of a, a meteor or something. And she'd be sitting up there like, what the fuck is going on here? What is this woman saying to me? And you just say crazy shit. I mean, just say anything. I mean, I don't, I, this is just what's coming to my mind right now. But if I were in that moment, especially if I was looking at her and I had something to read her about, then I would start in on that. And I would not cuss her out. I would not say anything. I would just tell her about herself. And so then, then I would be done. So while she was, you know, trying to talk to me, I would be the one doing all the talking. And then I would be the one walking away. So, you know, you want to keep your raggedy ass son, feel free to do that. I don't really give a shit. Because just like I got him lusting after me, now I can get somebody else that's probably got more money and look better and younger too. So, you know, y'all just make a decision. And that's going to be his choice. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not going nowhere until he tells me to. So, moms, mother-in-law. How you likes me now? You'd be shell-shocked. <laughs>
Yes, I'm good at doing that to people. Just talking, just talking crazy to them, especially people's mamas, because they get on my goddamn nerves. That's why, you know, I'm happy I'm in the old gray group I am now. So people's men, they mamas is mostly dead, including mine. But you know what I mean? At a certain point, you know, we, we're old now. So our parents are either like really old or they already dead. So like that mother-in-law drama, you know, that you have to deal with when you're in your 20s. You don't usually have to deal with that once you get in your 40s and beyond. 50s, you know, it's, by the time you're in your 60s and 70s, you really don't have to do it because the bitches is crispy and all kind of dried up by then. I'm just saying, that's what I would have done with her. But, um, you know, you got to stop running scared. They're only doing this to you because they see that it works. They're bullying you and you're letting them do it. You don't you let bullies bully you. You bully them back. <laughs> and you bully them way more and hardcore than they bully you. There's three of them, but they would be no match for me at all. I would read them bitches like there was no tomorrow. Yeah, manipulative. So anyway, let's move on from this question. Question number five. This is from a female, 25 to 29 age group out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. I've never heard of it. My boyfriend and I have been together for two and a half years now. I have lived on my own since I was 18. I'm 26. He still lives with his parents and he's 24. I understand with him being younger, he might not, quote, be there, but he is the main one that continues to say he, quote, can't wait to have kids, quote, can't wait to get married, and, quote, can't wait to live together. Now, anytime I bring up moving in marriage or kids, I'm either nagging or rushing. Hmm. Is that right? I shouldn't have, you know, usually I don't staple these, but this time I decided to staple them, and this is a drama. His parents and I get along great, but every time he tells them he's ready to move out, they give him a hard time and make him feel bad about it. So that makes him second-guess moving. I've offered him to move in with me, but he declined. He does help with bills, and we even have a couple of bills together. He stays in my house two to three days a week and every other weekend because of his work schedule. Moral of the story is I'm in a rut. I wear my heart on my sleeves. I'm not good about talking about it. So every time we talk about moving forward, we'd end up arguing because I don't understand what his motives are or aren't. Now, I have gone months without saying a thing about it. During that time, he will bring it up about he's going to go look at houses. But then months go by and nothing happens. If I ask for an update, I'm nagging again. I've read that giving an ultimatum is wrong, and I'm guilty of doing that in the past. Plus, I feel like you can't exactly rush engagement and everything that follows. I feel like I'm almost on a losing battle against him and his parents. I don't understand, and I have expressed to him that he can't torture, basically torture me with the fact that he wants to move on as a couple, but keeps hitting the brakes. I do love him and I would like to be with him, but what if he talks out of both sides of his neck with everything? I'm not sure how to approach this. Let me see this. Two and a half years. You've been living on your own since you were 18. He can't says all this stuff every time he wants to move out. His parents give him a hard time and make him feel bad about it. Okay, so they're trying to keep him there. So this is what you do. You sit home, boy, down, and you say, you know, I don't intend for this relationship to go three years with no forward progress towards moving, you know, moving towards marriage. Claim that's what you want. I would like to have my first child by the time I'm 30. And my second one, you know, somewhere shortly, a couple of years after that. And I'm not seeing where you're on that page or even in this in the same book. You're too tied to your parents' and your mama's apron string. So I'm going to cut you loose because I need a man and you're still living like a boy and I can't do this no more. I can't do it. And you're going to have to come hard on him like that because he is too easy for him. You're making it too easy. You're just going along with everything. So he's getting all the benefits of having this committed relationship where he can go somewhere and chill out away from his parents a few days a week and all this old stuff. And then going back home to mommy cooking for him and cleaning for him and changing his sheets and making him clean up his room. So he's got like the best of both worlds. You are so independent and so you just light years ahead of most people your age. So you are there's nothing that you can do with this kid. You need you a man. Somebody in his early 30s, okay, I'm thinking in the 29 to 33 age range is would be appropriate for you because you guys would be on the same level mentally 
and ready for the same kinds of, of uh, things. He's not ready, and he's not going to be ready as long as he stays tied to his parents' apron strings like that. Cut, cut, just cut bait. You've been wa- doing wasting your time for two and a half years with this nonsense. Just get rid of him. Just tell him, you know, when he grows up, you hope that he finds what he's looking for. But you can't do this no more and just dip out. Let him stay there with his mama and daddy. Question number six, female, 56 to 65 out of Louisville, Kentucky. I met a wonderful man online, and I think it's someone who's a great match for me. We're both retired from successful careers. We've moved in together, and although he has been separated from his wife for over 10 years, they never finalized their divorce. He agreed to go forward and complete the divorce, and she always told him, no problem, whenever you decide, we'll just go our separate ways. No fault, no fighting over money or anything. Thank you, Urban. He was taken by surprise when she ran up high legal bills and fought over every penny she thought he had or could earn to pay all her off in the future. I'm in my 60s and he's in his 70s. Finally, after an exhausting and very expensive process, he is divorced. I did not know he was married when I met him. On the single side, I would not have pursued the relationship and he knows that. But he still holds some resentment towards me for having the expense of getting a divorce and says if it weren't for me, he would not have had all the expense and heartache of the divorce. That makes no sense. Most of the time we have a great relationship, but if there's ever an argument, it's always his way or the highway. He's set in his ways, doesn't want to listen to reason, and doesn't want to hear anything that I say, and he shuts me down every time I try to talk. I know that I do not nag, and I think I'm very easy to get along with. I have faults, and I know what they are. I have never tried to change him. He is always critical of me, mostly little things. I irritate him when I talk about something he's not interested in. It doesn't matter at all that it could be something I'm interested in. Hmm. I Most of the time, I don't even say anything. I do all of the house cleaning, washing clothes, etc. He still owns a company. Most days, he also spends hours working at his computer. He also drinks to excess. No one in my family was an excessive drinker, so this is new to me. If he only has one to three drinks, he's cool. But if he drinks four or more, that's when the trouble starts. This is my dilemma. Do I want this relationship enough to put up with someone who's never wrong and who drinks to excess? I need to decide if for the rest of my life I want to always walk away from an argument or disagreement with him without having the satisfaction of knowing he is always right about every damn thing. I don't know if I want to do that or not. If I can't accept that part of his behavior, I did not see me being happy in this relationship. I love him and know that he loves me, but that doesn't mean we have to stay in a relationship. I truly do not know what to do. Let me advise you, young miss of 60-whatever. Um, He's a fool. And, you know, I can tell by the way that you wrote this, you're educated and you're a genteel person. You know, it's one of those sensitive women who's, you know, polite and kind and all those kinds of things that I might aspire to be in my next lifetime or maybe five after that because I still have some more hell to raise. But this is a hot mess and there's nothing you can do with this. See, men are, this is, this is it. This is what you're going to get. And I always tell women, if you have a situation that's bothering you, okay, this, his behavior is bothering you, his attitude is all kinds of jacked up, the way he treats you, talks to you, is crazy, all this kind of stuff. All you have to do to make a decision about whether you're going to leave or stay is to look into your future crystal ball and you say, okay, if he stays like this and nothing ever changes, can I deal with this for 20, 30 more years? If the answer is no, there's your answer. Because you know, if you can't deal with it for 20 or 30 years, then you don't need to deal with it for 20 or 30 minutes. Get rid of him. Okay, and this thing about trying to blame you because he got a divorce, you know, you were supposed to cuss him out on that moment. Say, motherfucker, you were sitting around there married and dipping and dabbing it with all kind of women every time you wanted to. So now you finally got a divorce. Don't be blaming that shit on me. You were separated when I met you. Fuck out of here. That's what you're supposed to tell his ass. And then he want to be all drunk and acting stupid and stuff. Um, Bop him upside the head with something. Especially he was trying to put his hands on you or get in your face or call you names or something. I'm a firm believer in bopping. You know, bop like that on the top of somebody's head. They just go crumble to the floor and then they be all right. And then since he was drunk, he wouldn't know that you did anyway. Say, man, you were so drunk you fell down and bumped your head. Are you all right? You okay? That looked kind of like it kind of hurt. Bop. <laughs> Bopping is wonderful. 
I'm just saying this this duty. I I I you know, and you doing all the cooking and cleaning and everything and being bothered with him and all his shit and he's seventy in his in his seventies. Are you in his will or something? Now if you in his will and you're gonna get something out of it when he croaks, that's one thing. But if you ain't even gonna get nothing, shit, fuck him. Tell him to go take his ancient ass, ancient alcoholic ass on somewhere. Question number seven, female, 18 to 21, out of Mobile, Alabama. I am 19 and my boyfriend is 20. We've been dating for almost two years. He's a great guy. He isn't toxic, really, but I feel like I want more. And to do more with my life, but he's content where we are. We both make good money. We share an apartment and a bank account. Oh, you're dumb. We've had some problems in the past, but I really do want him in my future. It's just that I would like to go back to college and get an associate's at least. I have a certificate in phlebotomy, and I want him to get a GED. He makes good money, but there are more opportunities with a GED. He doesn't want me to go to college in the name of saving for a house, and I understand that. We're on a fast track to it. We live so below our means naturally and still get the occasional expensive thing. But he doesn't even want me to go to work in a weekend package, which is two days of 12-hour shifts and getting paid for 40 hours. The plan would be to go weekend where I work now and pee him at another hospital. I even told him I did this. He could go to part-time and get the GED. He doesn't help much around the house. He doesn't want me to cut my hair. And I know there's things I would, have, I would advise someone on, but it's hard to take my own advice because I do love him. But I am, am I pushing someone to change more than is possible? If it were anyone else, I would tell him not to let a man hold them back, but I just can't take the advice from myself. Is there anything I could do to get him to understand I want bigger things for us? He already understands. He don't give a shit. You don't understand the mentality of a Dusty. Let me explain it to you. You are a 19-year-old girl trying to do big things with dreams of achievement, progress, success. You have a Dusty who's trying to hold you back. He don't want to do better for himself and he doesn't want you to do better for yourself either because, see, if you start doing all of those things, then he you're going to leave him in the dust. Oh, you like bopping? Girl, bopping is the best. <laughs> That's what's going on here. So what you have is someone who's going to be an albatross around your neck, whose love, love is going to weigh you down, whose love is going to keep you from making something of yourself who's got your money commingled with some dust bucket, immediately take your money out and open up a separate account. You're not married. You have no business having a joint bank account with that motherfucker. What's wrong with you? You have an account and he has an account. And then you need to move out and get your own place and go back to school and do all the stuff that you want to do for yourself. Let him stay over there being dusty with his non-GED having ass. You, you, I, I'm not even understanding how you're thinking that you should be sacrificing yourself and everything that you want to do for yourself and your future for him. Like he's the only man in the world and he's like a loser. He's not even trying to do nothing better for himself. What in the world are you doing wasting your time? I could see when you were 17 and 18, you didn't know no better. Okay, well now you're 19 and you do. Cut ties with this fool and move on. This is ridiculous. Man, where is your mother? He's a great guy. He ain't that great because he don't even have no kind of education. Probably can't even fucking spell. You know, I, mm -mm -mm. we see a lot of them kind on the Internet. Misspelling every damn thing. It's just hard to read what they write. No punctu punctuation all fucked up. No sentence structure. Everything's lowercase or all caps. It's just insane. I hate reading that kind of stuff. Their, their gramma, grammar's incorrect. Their tenses are all off. Everything that they do is fucked up. Ain't nobody trying to be bothered with all of that. So, you know, you you need to get your, act, get your head right. Get your act together. Look at what's in it for me. And you will see there ain't no shit. He ain't got shit to offer. Question number eight, female, and don't you dare get pregnant. I will come down there and stomp that baby out of you. This is read about the boat. That'd be about the dumbest shit that you could ever do. Question number eight, female, 18 to 21, Birmingham, West Midlands, England. Oh, I didn't know they had a Birmingham in England. Last night I was video calling with my boyfriend long distance and was ready to fall asleep because I was very tired. He told me to wake him up in the morning because I would wake up early to go to school. 
Actually, I'm really full this month because I'm doing a practicum and I have to work long hours and don't have even time to pee. <laughs> I also have some other problems. This morning, it was raining and I was late and I forgot to call him, though I did text him twice. It's not that I wasn't thinking of him. I just forgot I had to wake him up. He got mad and very angry at me. I understand him to be mad, but he should understand me too because I have a mess in my head and I'm so stressed. I am even going to school with a few hours of sleep. What is your opinion about his attitude and what should I do or say to him? You should tell him, fuck you very much. You wake your own ass up. You supposed to be a grown ass man. You got an alarm on your fucking phone just like everybody else. Don't be trying to put that responsibility for waking your narrow ass up on me. I'm not your mama. That's what you tell him. I don't give a fuck if you sleep like like Sleeping Beauty for 20 years. I just don't care. I'm going to be up and doing what I need to do. You need to do the same, son. Because why? I'm not your mama. It's not my responsibility to wake you up, tell you what time to go to sleep, feed you nothing. You're a grown man. Handle your business. And then if he gets the attitude and continues saying, well, let's, let's break up because this is some bullshit. I'm not really trying to hear all of this and you're getting on my nerves. And so I have other stuff to do to be arguing with an idiot. And so I'm done. I'm done here. Bye. I just, you know, I don't, ooh, I just can't. I don't understand why these young girls be sacrificing so much and letting these dudes talk to them all kind of crazy. You be mad if you want to. You would have got cussed out so hard you would be wait for the next two weeks trying to get over it. It's like, don't tell me you're mad because I didn't wake you up. I don't give a fuck. You, I'm, I'm telling you. I don't give a fuck. You can miss work, life itself. Mm-mm-mm. Male, 21, 26 to 29 out of Sydney, Australia. This is question number nine. We got 22 questions again this, this time, everyone. 22 questions. We're not even up to halfway mark yet. He says, I'm 27. I recently moved out of the U.S. for a high-end academic job in Australia. I really have zero friends. I'm completely new to the country and, all, and only mingle with some of my coworkers when I'm at work. Just a few weeks after I started, one of the women close to my age started talking to me. She seemed really nice and really interested. My immediate thought was that she wanted to make me feel comfortable and understood my lonely situation, which I thought was nice and kind. She also would usually sit alone, so it seemed like a win-win. However, I really struggled to interpret signals. At first, she was simply friendly when we occasionally met for lunch in a canteen, but she gradually started to seek my attention by randomly coming over to my desk to talk. When we looked through some work-related profile photos, she complimented my looks. She would push her chair over to me, kick me shoe, oh, I guess kick my shoe, and say, hey, we had the same shoes. Can you believe that? And laugh. She invited me to go to lunch with her. She adamantly said that if she liked a man, she would actively seek out their attention instead of waiting for them to take the initiative. Hmm. I started to believe that she might be interested in me. This went on for about two months doing what I consider flirting. She would also talk about how she enjoyed to travel and that she had traveled to England several times. I was actually considering asking her out, something I had never done before. I knew that. Yesterday, she randomly told me in a kind of a forced way that she had a boyfriend, something like, yeah, my boyfriend also likes that. He lives in England. How can someone talk with someone for two months, flirting and seeking contact, having deep conversations, even discussing living in England and people we know that have been there without mentioning their significant other? I did not think I would feel this bad. I feel like she noticed my interest in her and used it for what it was worth for cheap company at work. I feel so dumb for wasting my thoughts and energy on whether she liked me. I've been thinking about her for weeks. I feel like a child. My feelings are actually hurt. I hate that my pessimistic intuition seemed to be correct more often than I would like. Am I being silly here? Should I have known? Yes, you're being silly. You're putting too much on it. See, these you the kind of dude that women can't talk to. Can't be friendly with. Just basic friendliness in the office. Okay, she ain't trying to, she didn't spend no time with you after work. She didn't try to get together with you on the weekend. She didn't ask you to go to the movies. She didn't ask you to go to dinner. She didn't ask you to do nothing. Okay, so where you think this was jumping off into something romantic? Everything that she interacted with you was at work. Now, why you think somebody should mention their significant other? Why do you think someone should do that? That only really applies if you're married. Other than that, it ain't nobody's business. 
If you're married, you know, chances are people, your husband will come around or he'll call or leave a message. You know, there's going to be some interaction because you're married. You probably have kids and shit. But, you know, she's dating somebody who lives in miles and miles away. I mean, why would she tell you that? Why is that your business? Why would you expect somebody to just come right? Oh, yes. And by the way, I'm dating someone who lives in England. Don't you think that sounds kind of odd where you would be like, what you telling me that for? That's why she didn't tell you. So what I'm going to tell you is, you know, stop jumping the gun. You, by the fact, I already knew that you hadn't gone out with anybody because I could tell by the way you was putting all that emphasis on the little basic, minute, just not, nothing stuff that she did, just being friendly. So, you know, is this is the kind of thing where guys have to understand unless someone takes initiative to ask you for your phone number to call you after work or on the weekend or let's get together or have a drink. Let's get together and go to dinner. Let's get together and go hiking on the weekend, something like that. Then they ain't interested in you. OK. Don't be putting too much on it. Just relax and enjoy it for what it is, which was a good opportunity for you to have a friendship with a female person at your job and, you know, kind of be able to have enjoy female companionship without it having to be anything super meaningful. You could have had just a lot of fun with this girl. That's all. But you want to just make a big deal out of it. And now you're all resentful. Whew. Lord have mercy. Let us move on. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was the times I was interested in a dude. I just would let him know. But my kind of let them know is different. Like, you know, like say they be staring at you or something, right? This was one of my lines I used to like to use a lot when I was into the nightclub scene. You know how dudes be checking you out and they be looking at you all hard and stuff. So I just walk over there, just get like this, you know, pre-COVID days, remember that I'm like this far away from his face to where, you know, a few inches more, we could be kissing. But, you know, you do that because then it's like your tatas are like real close by his chest and you can see his breathing change. You can see his Adam's apple go up and down. You can see the temple pulse in his head. Now, if all that's going on, then that means he's excited. That means that he was enjoying looking at you and he was just trying to get his nerve up. Those are the signs that I just gave you. If none of that happens, then he was just looking, just probably got a woman at home and just out with his friends and not really tripping. But if you do, he does all of that, well, then there's, you know, some interest there. So then that's if you're interested back, then yes, when you just say, oh, so I saw you looking. You like what you what you see? And then he's going to be like, oh, uh, er, er, oh. It always catches them off guard. They don't know what to say. They start stuttering. <laughs> They start stuttering. It's like, never mind all that. Come on, let's dance. And then we go dance. And then they kind of, you know, relax. Yes, I'm trying to tell you, but you got to get close enough to see that. You know, nightclubs are dark, so you got to, you know, be close. So, and then plus, you know, you be drinking a little bit and stuff. You can't see. So, you got to move in real close so you can see what I'm telling you. That little, that vein starts jumping around and he swallows right here. And then he's, his breathing changes got him now if you want him he's yours for the taking if you just want to dance or something then that's just put him back after you finish with him but it's fun to do that well I used to enjoy doing that kind of stuff back in my young days when I was stupid <laughs> so, <laughs> and just enjoy fucking with men okay so let's move on uh where was I Oh, okay. Question 10. Female, 30 to 36, out the UK. Hi, Deb. I am a 33-year-old woman. I recently broke up with this guy, and I'm wondering whether to give it another go or move on. No. You always move on. You don't never give it another go. But let's see your story. Last year, I reached out to a man who's now 35, but I've known him since I was 14. We started a long-distance relationship. At first, it was great. I was excited to talk to him, and I'd get butterflies when thinking of him or seeing him. I was very attracted. A few months later, we went on holiday together, and I suddenly had this strong gut feeling that something wasn't right. It was a really strong visceral feeling in my stomach, like panic or sickness. Mm -mm. I decided to ignore it. Nope, that was your female intuition. 
because he is kind, supportive, intelligent. Maybe we're just spending that much time together. We were drinking, so maybe I was hungover. Later, we went on holiday again, and I felt myself getting annoyed with everything about him. His snoring, his silly jokes, his phrases, his breathing. Oh, yes. Shades of Ward Roses. <laughs> I again had this strong feeling like, this is not right. Get away from this man in this relationship. So we broke up. These were the two main times we spent extended time more than a long weekend together. All this has made me less attracted to him and done, and some things I have even felt disgusted about. He has done nothing wrong. has been good to me. Telling me he wants to spend his life with me. He's a good man. Hardworking, funny, intelligent. He actually listens. I don't understand why I'm having these feelings or if I can get over them. I wonder if I'm being critical of him because I moved on him too fast from a traumatic relationship. Or if I'm trying to make it work with someone that should be a friend. Maybe I just don't want to lose my chance to have a family. And I'm scared if I lose him, I might find out too late that we were a good match or might not meet someone I get on with better. Because we live in different cities, it's not easy to just hang out and see how it goes. He feels strongly that we should try again. I'm not sure. I don't want to waste precious time with someone who's not right or hurt his feelings even more. My mother and friends don't think he's right for me, although my mother described him as reliable. Should I give it another go or move on and try to find someone I feel more sure about? No, everything here is negative. I mean, you said a few basic things about him, but I mean, that's stuff that you would say about a friend. I don't see any reason to call yourself being in a relationship with this chap. Okay, you don't like him. You know that he snores funny, he breathes funny, he tells red, red, you know, raggedy ass jokes. I mean, you don't like this, the stuff he says. I mean, those are the kind of things you have to have good communication and want to be around somebody you're going to be within a long term relationship. Everything about him irritates the fuck out of you. So just let it go. Why are you listening to other people? Listen to yourself. And yourself is telling you this is, this is, not, this is a no. Roll with that and tell him, now I thought about it and I'm going to just leave things as they are. There's no point in going backwards. Like Woody Allen says, be like a shark. Sharks only swim one direction and that's forward. That needs to be us too. So it's nice knowing you. I wish you the best. Ta-ta. That's what you do. I don't know what's wrong with them. They're just crazy. You asking me that? Question number 11, female 225 out of Tacoma, Washington. I've been speaking to someone for a while, and he's a bit hot and cold. When he's hot, it's great, and we have a lot of chemistry. He doesn't live close to me, so a lot of our communication is over text. We were texting the other day, and it was fine. I got upset about something, so I asked if he was free for a chat, but he said he had things to do for work. Okay, so that's fine. I made a little joke like, oh, I could have kept you company. I'm basically an expert at that. For some reason, after speaking all day, he went quiet. And didn't open his message for 24 hours despite him being online constantly. I gave him 24 hours and sent him another message the next day asking how his day was. Again, no response. I sent one more later asking if he was okay. Less than a minute later, here's the response I got. Jesus, leave it out. I'm busy. Please stop. I said that's absolutely fine, but just tell me if you're busy because I'm not a mind reader. I then got a sarky reply. Usually when people don't reply, it means they're busy. I was quite hurt, so I just didn't reply. 24 hours later, I decided to apologize for being annoying and said, sorry, I was a bit down. I just wanted to chat. Sorry if I was annoying. Again, he keeps coming online and is completely ignoring this text. What do I do? I feel like things were so good between us that I have no idea how to play this. He was so interested before. Any advice? Yes, you're a fucking bugaboo. Why would you? Okay, he didn't respond. Don't you know what that means? That means either I don't want to respond or I'm too busy to respond. Either way, don't keep sending more texts. Because he was like me. He was very polite because I would have been like, fucking stop texting me. When I'm free, I will text you back. Leave me the fuck alone. That's what you would have got from me. So I feel like he was somewhat polite with his. He, you know, he didn't use any profanity. He just said Jesus. That's about as bad as it got. But you, you still text him some more. After he said no, you, you know, oh, I'm, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, you still haven't stopped texting him. So you just sealing the deal. He's not going to want to be bothered with you. So I'm just going to suggest that you block his number because this is a wrap, girlfriend, and then find you somebody else to bug. This is the woman. You got it confused. The woman is the one who wrote the letter, and she's the one who's bugging the dude to death. Telling him, you know, writing his in all these texts. So I don't know. She's just too fucking needy or something. That just would get on my nerves. I don't like that kind of stuff. 
Question number 12, female, 21 to 25, out of Rialto, California. We started dating last week. And have been hanging out a lot. He mostly initiated it. While on the topic of our parents, he says that he and his parents fight a lot about him not wanting kids. And I asked if he doesn't want kids at all, to which he replied he doesn't know. In his previous relationship, his ex hadn't wanted them, so he didn't put too much thought into it. His reason for not wanting kids is because they require a lot of work, and he feels like he won't be able to enjoy his life and be happy. I told him it's a deal breaker for me, and he told me that he isn't really sure, but this is just where his mind is at. At the end of this conversation, he apologized for bringing this up at all and asked me not to disappear or bail on him. I'm not sure what to think. I know men who have, who have come around to the idea of kids and men who truly don't want them. A part of me wants to bail because I am worried. Another part says it's not been that long. I should get to know him before to see how firm he is on this. <laughs> You've been dating a week. Are you fucking kidding me right now? You don't even know dude's middle name or favorite color, and you are upset about the fact that he don't want to have kids with you? Hmm. I'm going to suggest this. You've only been dealing with dudes for a week, okay? This is not a committed relationship. Date other people. You can still keep him in your sphere if you want to, but don't be looking at him as the end-all and be-all of your life. He's not like your boyfriend, okay? He's just somebody that you just met. And personally, if I really was that fixated on knowing that this was my life goal, was to be somebody's mama, it never was mine, but yes, a week, girl. Uh, if that's really, you know, what you want, then he said, telling you straight up, he don't want them or he don't know if he wants them and it's going to ruin his life and stuff. That's not the attitude of a father. That's so that someone who's very self-centered and selfish and he doesn't want to be bothered. And there's nothing wrong with that being centered on yourself. But the only problem is when you get into a relationship with somebody where you have to give of yourself and then you have that attitude, that's when it becomes a problem. But just being single and being self-centered, that's fine. That's, that's not a problem. Don't you have no complaints out of me. But, you know, you obviously want a different kind of man. You have every right to find that guy. You should have a guy who wants what you want in life. So this man would be someone who would be a waste of your time. That's why I say, I mean, if you have a good time with him, you can still do that. But don't put no emotional, don't put any emotional investment in him. Date other people. That's my suggestion. And stop rushing stuff a week. My God. You know? A week? I don't even know if I like you. Let alone want to be like your woman and be like, you know, having babies with you and talking about all that kind of stuff oh no we ain't talking about that because that would mean that you getting you tapping that ass guy right? because babies don't appear like dinky dinky dink by magic so that would mean that we have to be sleeping together so that would mean that i slept with you in under a week and i'm worried about if we're gonna have a kid no <laughs> that <laughs> deb don't roll like that i don't roll like that that would be just way too much Ooh, girl Question number 13, female, 18 to 21, out of Pueblo, Pueblo, Colorado. It was my 21st birthday a few days ago, and an acquaintance wished me a happy birthday. We kept on talking, and him and some other friends have always said how we should go rock climbing. He said we should go together, so I just said, well, sure, thinking he meant it as a group. Now I feel like he's being flirty, and he just said, tell me more about you. I just don't know what to say without sounding harsh because I don't see him that way. Do you consider that question as flirty? How should I respond when guys ask me things like that? You should ask him, well, what is it that you want to know? And then he's going to tell you. And then that's when you have two choices. You can veer to the left or you can veer to the right. If you veer to the right, you ask him, well, why would you need to know that? Okay. If you veer to the left, then you answer the question. I'm always a right veerer personally. So I would veer to the left and say, well, why would you need to know that? And then he will say, oh, because blah, 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 blah. And then that's when you had a golden opportunity to say, oh, well, um, I don't know. You know, that sounds like you're just trying to get around to expressing some kind of interest in me. And I want to stop you right there because that would not be interest. That wouldn't be mutual. I am not interested in dating anybody right now and leaving out the part, especially you. But it's implied. It's implied, especially you. 
Yeah, people are nosy. You know, I don't even like people asking me. You know how you would be at a job and people ask, what are your plans this weekend? Or what did you do over the weekend? I don't, you don't need to know. Stay out of my business. I'm not asking you. I don't give a fuck what you did, where you went, who you saw, who you did it with. I don't give a fuck what you did. All I care about is if you got some work that is involved in, that I need you to do so I can do what I need to do, that's, let's talk about that. Okay, I don't want to know what you did and your husband and your kids and your boyfriend and your cat and your dog and your moose in the backyard. I don't give a fuck about all those things. I don't want to know about those things. Don't talk to me about that kind of stuff. Just leave me out of that conversation. I be in my head a lot. And when people start talking to me about mundane shit like that, see, it interferes with my thoughts. I'm <laughs> my thoughts that I'm having with myself. I don't want to know. I don't give a shit. And then I just hate it. And then people ask you that kind of stuff, especially when I want to, well, how old are you? I'm like, why, are you with Social Security or something? What, you going to be trying to give me a check? Well, no, I just wanted to know. This one lady tells me, I just wanted to know. I said, well, what you want to know that for, though? Well, uh, and she didn't have an answer. I just kept asking the same question. I said, oh, well, then it's obvious you don't need to know all that information about me. So then she tells me how old she is. I said, that's nice. I didn't ask you how old you were, though. Well, don't you want to know? I said, nope, I don't care. See, people don't understand. It's like stuff like that, you know, it's like if you ain't, it's not going to make me no money for me to know all these things about you. <laughs> it's just like it's not helping me to know these things about you. And likewise, it's not helping me for you to know these things about me. So why do we need to have this conversation? You know, you ain't my friend and you don't need to know. So anyway, I'm telling you all of this because I want you to have an understanding of how to handle You're young. I right? just turned 21. This is stuff that you're going to run into a lot because people are nosy as fuck. They're going to want to know how much you, you know, how long you've been dating since, you know, how old were you when you first did it? You know, would, would your, pay your parents still married? I mean, if people ask you, do you have any kids? They ask you all kinds of personal questions. And all you have to do is figure out how you're going to shut them down and not answer their questions. You can do it politely or you can just walk off and just like, let, you know, look at them like Psh, and walk off. But either way, you don't need to be giving people all that information on your spouse, especially in this day and age where there's identity theft right and left. OK, you need to really keep your mouths closed, ladies. Stop telling people all your business, like where you work and how much money you make and all that kind of stuff. They don't need to know all of that. They know some guy asks you, well, where do you do for work? You say, oh, I'm in the you know, tech field. Does that say where you work or what you do? No. I'm in the tech field. I'm in the medical field. I'm in the legal field. I'm in the, I don't know, engineer field. I'm in the architecture field. I'm this, you know, but that this vague. That's all they need to know. They don't need to know specifics. They definitely don't need to know where you work. Okay, that's how people become stalkers. So anyway, that's my thing. That's my, that's how I would suggest that you handle stuff like that. So just think about those options and find one that's comfortable for you and roll with it. Question number 14, female, 26 to 29, Brunswick Park, London. Wow, all these fancy places in this time in the column. I have been meeting up with my 34-year-old friend for walks, and it is clear that there's a romantic connection there. We have been maintaining social distancing and hand washing, etc., the thing is, he is extremely anxious about the virus and said he will only feel at peace once the vaccine is ready. He's stupid. That don't mean it's going to work. Whilst I respect he has anxiety, I don't really want to be hanging out with a man who's waiting for the unknown. The vaccine could take months or years to come out, and I can't put my life on hold. If I was to start a romantic connection with the man, I would stick to the support bubble. I don't know what his problem is, as I am sensible and not really meeting anyone else. I only saw some friends the other day for a walk for the first time in six months. I just find the whole dating scene disheartening, and usually you would flirt by touching someone's arm, etc. I don't touch him as I'm concerned he is anxious, but then how can you make it clear you are interested as it comes across as friendship without the physical contact? Girl, be interested in somebody else. He's a nutcase. First of all, when you have men who are this anxious and scary about something to the point where they're just like fucking paranoid, I can't. I cannot because that means he has like no courage and no sense. You know, even if you are afraid of catching it, 
You know, what is the percentage of people who die from it? Less than 1%. Okay, everybody else has it and recovers. So the odds of for him to get it and recover are super duper ridiculously high. Especially he's a young cat and he's reasonably, you know, he's healthy. So for him to sit up there and, you know, be all concerned like this to where, you know, you he says he's only going to feel safe if there's a, a vaccine. Vaccines don't always work anyway. And sometimes they give you the very disease that you were getting a shot for. Think about how many people catch the flu after they get a flu shot. Okay, that ought to tell you something. So I personally would be done with dude. Um, you might have more patience than me, though, and you might want to continue dealing with him and all his dramas and his foibles, but I just could not. I wouldn't be able to waste my time with somebody like that because I just want to slap the shit out of him. He start whining about, oh, the virus, the virus. I would just haul off and just just knock, kick him in his nuts or something. I would just, I just, he would just irritate the fuck out of me, and I just wouldn't want to be bothered. I'm telling you, just reading this letter is irritating to me. I could just see him sitting there looking all scared and mealy mouth. I would just want to just, just stab him or something. I just this, these kind of people just incite me to violence. So I just don't see how you can do this. And I am done with your letter. And I hope you figure this out and leave this fool alone. I'm just saying, this, this, I couldn't. He would just, ugh. He'd be every kind of punk bitch I could think of. Question number 15, female, 30 to 36 out of the USA. Well, that's rather vague, isn't it? I am in my mid-30s and my husband is in his late 40s. We got two young kids and married for seven years. I'm working on getting half of his salary, but he's paying for all. No, I'm working, getting half his salary, but he's paying for all the child and living expenses. I discovered my husband used prostitutes. Ooh, five years ago. Numerous dating website browsing history and then two continuous seat movie tickets a couple of years ago. We went on marriage counseling and it seemed fine. But then two days ago, I discovered him contacting this woman for, quote, platonic cuddling, end quote. I am very heartbroken and decided to begin the separation process. I need one year in this state. He agreed to return to his parents and let me stay in the house that we just rent. My question to you are, number one, should I tell his parents? I see that a lot of people are recommending that I'm telling the parents. My concern is if I do that, it will make him upset and he might stop paying for the rent and the living expenses. And number two, in the state that I am, I need a one year separation. Do I need to contact a divorce divorce attorney now? Yes, of course you do. Because you might have bad information about this needing one year thing. Okay, so find out what the current laws are. And what you know, what your rights are, what his rights are, and all of that kind of stuff, and what you know, the deal with the kid. I mean, get an idea of what's going to happen here. As far as telling his parents, what is it that you think you're going to run and tattle and tell his parents for? What kind of bitch shit is that? You a grown ass woman. Don't you be thinking about running, telling nobody nothing. That's not in your marriage. If he wants to tell his parents, that's his business. You shut up. You don't say shit to nobody. You want to tell somebody, you tell your parents. You could do that. But you don't go running telling his parents nothing. That's just some silly bitch shit. And you know, I don't advocate silly bitch shit on this channel. So no, that's disgusting that you even would think to do some shit like that. If he, they, they'll know what's up because if he'll, they'll tell him, he'll tell them when he gets there. If they move back home. Oh my God, you in the 30 to 36 age group talking like this. Come on now. No, you don't tell his parents nothing. It ain't a marriage. That's your fucked up marriage. You deal with it. Question number 16, female, 26 to 29 out of Alberta, Canada. So I've been talking to this guy for a while and everything is great. We're not officially dating yet. So I really don't have much to say. Anything he does. However, there's something about him that puts me off a little bit. Recently, we shared each other's Facebook and Instagram pages. I noticed that on his page, he posts a lot of provocative pictures of himself, basically with him being almost naked. He posts a lot of pictures of himself with nothing on but his underwear and a lot of explicit contact content. Hmm. Wait a minute. How old is this chap? Y'all at you 26 to 29. Okay, in Canada. Little freak in Canada. <laughs> uh, I talked to him about it, and he basically just says it's something that he posts when he's bored. Would this be a deal breaker for you and someone that you're dating? 
It just seems kind of off-putting for me, but I wanted to get your take on it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Little exhibitionist freak. When you have somebody like that, he's a straight narc. He's just looking for as much adulation and, I don't know, attention as he can get. Whether it comes from men or women. Because, you know, gay men will look at stuff like that and be like liking the picture just like like a woman would. And once he posts it online, you don't know what his target audience is. Right? Because you just met him. So you don't know if he's a fence jumper. Men, women, men, women, men, women jumping the fence back and forth over and over here today, there tomorrow. You don't know what dude's gave, you know, ultimate goal is here. So what I suggest, you're not officially dating yet. Make sure that doesn't happen. Say, look, son, you're too much of a freak for me. I just want somebody who's regular. Okay, somebody who posts pictures of himself on fishing trips or working out at the gym, maybe on a picnic with his parents and his sister and his nieces and nephews, something like that. Him with his dog jogging. Something along those lines, not nudes on the Internet. I'm not feeling you at all. So let's end this. That would be what I would say. Yeah, honey, like a kangaroo. Just boing a boing a boing a boing a back and forth and back and forth. Oh, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. And just the fact that he would have them pictures up there like that, see, that would be like, I'd be like, no. Because there's something wrong with you. And I don't do men who's, you know, like I said in the video, right? In the intro thing, you know, mentally ill, depressed nut jobs, dude is in that category. He's a, he's a no. That's a big no. Yeah, I can't do pervs. I can't see. If I have to have any kind of concerns about where you really coming from, your thought processes, some doubts and questions about your lifestyle, you know, you not real forthcoming about what's going on with you. There's doubts, there's questions, there's dark holes and areas where there needs to be some light shed and stuff like that. I'm going to cut you loose. I'm not going to do that. Now, when I was young and had a lot of time to waste, you know, I might do it because it would be intriguing. You know, I'd be like trying to find out the mystery and all of that kind of stuff. Being like Indiana Jones going on some kind of excursion to find out what's making this man tick. Nowadays, you know what? I'd be like, I throw that little Indy's little whipping shit down and just walk off. I don't have no interest in all of that. Shoot, I need I need my last days for myself. <laughs> okay, let's move on to question number seventeen. Male, thirty to thirty-six, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I have been labeled financially abusive by my wife, who moved into her own home a couple of months ago, leaving me. Leaving my two daughters, 13 and 15, and I behind. We have a lot of credit card and loan debt, so we are spending the next two years paying it off to get back to enjoying life. Our bills were almost to what we brought in each month, and we, whoa, and we split what was left to use as entertainment. However, after my wife agreed with the plan, she says months later she's not happy and should be able to spend more. I explained and showed her that the money is just not there to spend, and that's why it's important to pay our debt off, especially with our oldest going to college in two years. She told me that since she's a nurse, there's no reason she can't spend more than she does. Remember, I showed her there's no extra money. She now labels me as financially abusive, which caused her to move out, and now she's behind on her car payment three months into her independent venture. The reason we have so much credit card and loan debt, $65,000! is because of her years of overspending and having to pay bills with the cards, which led to a buildup of interest. My God, my plan was working as we were paying smallest to largest, and we would all be clear in two years, but her patience ran out. Now I'm stuck paying everything on my own because she refuses to pay. If it's not in her name, of course she still shops for herself, but when it comes to our daughters, it's always she can't afford to buy them things they need, I want because she doesn't have money for that, as she says. What do I do? File for bankruptcy and divorce at the same time. Her car payment's behind. Let it go. Let her deal with that. She can catch, get a bus pass. It's cheaper. But that would be my recommendation. You go and you see a divorce attorney tomorrow. 
You see the divorce attorney and you to show him all these debts and what she's doing. And then you tell him that you need to file for a divorce so this cuts off any and all commingled assets. And then you need to tell, ask the attorney what you do about bankruptcy. It's going to be hard. You, you know, own your home. You, I don't know what they do about in Canada, but here they have something called homesteading. So your home would not necessarily be involved. You know, if you have income property, that would be sold off. But if you have, uh, you know, just a home that you live in, and that's just it with the children especially, um, that would be, you know, ban bar banned, blocked, whatever the word is, from being part of the, the bankruptcy. So you can keep your house, but you won't be able to, you know, really keep too much else but one thing that you wouldn't have is all this debt okay or you could try to do a reorganization you know sometimes the creditors will either knock down the debt or, lim or just write it off because you know they realize that there's just no nothing's going to really be coming out of this because you don't have no money so um you know talk to an attorney though and investigate which option would be the best for you under the circumstances that you in you know with your two kids and get you some wise legal counsel. I can't do it for you. I'm just giving you some ideas and stuff to think about. But one thing you definitely need to do is cut ties with this silly bitch. That's what you need to do. Is she going to go into a financial hole? Let it go by herself. Teach your daughters about money management so they don't end up stupid like their mama. Question number 18. Female, 30 to 36 in Atlanta. One of my criticisms about my ex was that he wasn't attentive enough. We would go to gatherings and clubs and parties, and he would ignore me sometimes when I talked to him and stay as long as possible until I would blow up because I was tired and wanted to go hours before that. I did try to give him notice that I was ready, but he claims that I never did, and I feel like I'm ignored as I try to speak to him. He says that he gets excited seeing his friends and wants to hang with them as much as possible because he doesn't see them often, and he sees me every day. My solution was to go to these events less so he can stay as long as he wants. But he also got upset because I would not go. I'm just not the party type. And I get tired, lonely, and not into drinking, so I can't even be a happy drunk in the corner. I feel like if we were out, he would compromise and tell me he'd like to stay till midnight. And I would say, okay, and come midnight, come, it's time to go. And he'll be okay with that. Or just any time, tell him I'm ready and he would care enough to go. But obviously, it took me blowing up for us to go, and then he thought that I should get mental help from my tantrums. I have talked to other couples who say that when either of them wants to go, then they simply go. No annoyance, no questions, no fights. It's easy. Should boyfriends be more attentive to their partners within reason? No, they're not obligated to. They are obligated to do what the fuck they want to do. So let me tell you how this is going to go. If you want to go somewhere with him, because I used to have to do this with my own mother once I started driving, because I wasn't going nowhere with that heifer. Well, she was going to have my ass stuck, because that's what she used to like to do. Go run her mouth for hours and hours and stuff. I'm ready to go. I got homework to do and stuff like that. My friends to talk to. Shit, you know, teenage shit to do. So here I am, 16, with my driver's license and my own car that I bought. My car payment was $127 a month. But I got that. I got me a car. It was an MG BGT, the little hardback hatchback MG. And I, me and my little buggy, my grandma used to call it my little buggy. And uh, I would, my mother said, oh, we going over here, over there. I said, okay, I'll meet you there. And then I would meet her there. And then when I got tired, I'm like, well, I'm leaving now. And I would go get in my car and drive off. That's what you need to do, madam. You don't be sitting there trying to hound a grown man about leaving the party because you want to leave. Then you do what you said and don't, either don't go or you make arrangements to take an Uber, a taxi, a lift, a hitchhike, a bus ride, or drive, or walk, skateboard, bicycle, whatever the fuck you want to do to get your ass up out of there and go home. That's what you do. Because whether, if he's having a good time at a party with his friends, he don't have to need because you do. It's nice when other couples do that kind of stuff, but I don't, I, I wouldn't, if I didn't want to leave, I wouldn't leave either. And I would tell my significant other, well, I'm still staying, so you go ahead. Go ahead and do what you need to do. I'm not ready to go yet. And then they would go, and we would not be fighting about it either. Because I'm grown, and so are you. So you make a choice to put what works for you, and so do I. So I don't understand this kind of stuff, especially in a 30 to 36 age group, what you, you don't know how to call an Uber. Surely they have Ubers in Atlanta. Taxi cab, something. 
You could have done anything that you wanted to do to go home and, or your place, his place, wherever you was going, and not have to start a scene with him at the party. But you chose to act a fool. That's why he said you need to get help for your temper tantrum because all that was unnecessary and highly immature. Just stupid. See, that's some shit that would have me breaking up with you. You know what I'm saying? Just get on Uber. Get your ass in an Uber. You should have a little app on your phone. I have Lyft. Mash that thing. It's connected to my credit card. It pays automatically. Add that little tip or whatever and pick you up and take you where you want to be. No problem. So I don't understand what all this is about. You just want to start a bunch of shit and cause a bunch of ruckus in your relationship. I hope you're happy because you know you're going to keep it up and he's going to dump you. Question number 19, female, 30 to 36, Las Vegas, Nevada. See, wait, let me read, let me finish one. This I got one other thing to say on this. You know, the whole thing about um, this situation right here is that you are trying to control him. Everything that you said has to do with what you want him to do what you want him to do. And even using other couples to co-sign on your position. In, any man is not going to go for that. Any man is going to tell you to kiss his ass and he's going to do what he wants to do. See, that's the corner that you're pushing him into. What you're doing is very, very risky, very dangerous, and guaranteed to start cause resentment and problems in your relationship. I highly recommend that you stop this and you figure out an alternative that does not involve acting stupid in front of his friends at events. Okay? Grow up. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was thinking it, but I've forgotten, so I started the other letter. Okay, back to question 19. Female 30 to 35 in Las Vegas. Okay, I'm writing to you because I figured you would know better than anyone since you've been through this yourself. Just to be clear, I'm not exactly jumping at the bit, but my boyfriend died a week ago in an auto accident, and this has occurred to me to think about. He and I were most definitely in love. He was a great guy, but he had some demons, some big ones that I would have tried to stick around with, but made me seriously consider leaving multiple times over the past three years, including the night before he died. So while I'm heartbroken, I miss him like crazy. I know I'll be ready to move on soon. My questions are these, though. How long should I wait until I date again? I'm concerned that if I start dating too soon, I'll bring issues into new ventures. How do I know when it feels right for me? Also, when I start dating again, do I have to tell the person that my last partner died, like right away? What about hooking up? What is the protocol for mentioning this in a hookup? What do I ask myself to know if I'm ready for a hookup? Thanks in advance. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all with me, that's what I'm thinking, too. What? What? Okay, first of all, motherfucker is apparently just got in the ground yesterday. Okay, he died a week ago, and you already worried about who you're going to be fucking? You say you loved him and you heartbroken? Your ass bitch ass is lying like a carpet. You ain't, you ain't missed him. You ain't lonely, and you don't love him. If you loved him and you were truly heartbroken, then the, some other motherfucker up in your face would be the last thing you would be thinking about. Trust me. You say, because I've been there, you're right. And I'm telling you, when you really love somebody and they die, the last thing you're thinking about is fucking somebody else. You don't want, you're not looking, looking at nobody else to do shit with you except get the fuck out your face. That's what you be thinking about. So, madam, in spite of your proclamations about love and all this old shit, you're lying. You're lying to yourself and you're trying to lie to me, but you think I'm stupid? Like, I don't know better. You wrote the wrong columnist if that's what you were thinking. Um... As far as him having demons and all this old stuff, well, you he might have wanted to leave, but you didn't. So what you want from me? You shouldn't even have mentioned that. You'll be ready to move on soon. Wow. Hooking up. What's the protocol for that? You out you out you out the box. I can't even help I I have nothing to say to this. You do what you want to do. All right. Question number twenty, female forty six to fifty five out of the UK. I have friends over tonight, really close friends we've known for 20 years, plus the girlfriend of their son who we've known for 20 years plus. I asked her what she does for work. She says she's a teaching assistant. I'm a nurse, and out of interest, I say, oh, well, how much do you get paid, if you don't mind me asking? 
She says, no, I don't mind at all, but my husband chirps in. Don't ask her that. It's none of your business, or worse to that effect. I can't quite remember exactly. She answered my question, but not before I say shut up to him. Fair enough. I could have said it in a better phrase, but he says, no, I won't. Wow, you guys, 46 to 55, are you ain't beefing like that? Then our friends look at us, considering we just got together after four months apart, instigated by me as I was struggling with depression brought on by our 16-year-old daughter's depression and his dominating personality, example tonight, hostile to which I thought he felt embarrassed. Right now, we've just rode about it, and he's gone to bed in a huff. What have I done wrong? You are stupid. That's what you've done wrong. First of all, you lucky that that little girl is young and dumb. Let me tell you how that would have went if you had asked me. Oh, how much do you make? None of your goddamn business. And then you would have looked stupid at the dinner party with your friends and their son and his girlfriend that you just met that night. And you trying to be knee deep up in her wallet, in her business. And what you don't, because you a nurse, you want to compare your salary to a teacher assistant of some young girl in her 20s? She's a TA. They don't make no money. But you want to just crow about, you know, the fact that you were a nurse and brag about your salary? You're a bitch, madam. You are a bitch. And that's the whole thing about you made this little girl feel small. You made her boyfriend embarrassed. You made your friends, like, confused and humiliated that, you know, you put that little girl on the spot like that. Your husband is embarrassed because you're a stupid bitch. You'll sit up there and ask somebody some shit like that and be all rude to your friends and they, the son and his girlfriend in your own house? And then you want to say that he's controlling? He's not controlling. He was just trying to check you before you did something really, really ignorant. But it was too late because you already did it. Yeah, she wanted to stroke her ego. Like I said, so she could brag, you know, think about, well, you know, I'm a nurse. <laughs> And you're a mere T.A. Well, you in the 46 to 55 age group ancient fuck. And so you got 30 years experience on this little girl who's just got out of college and working as a T.A. So, of course, she's not making no kind of money like you in your peak of your career earning potential. And she just starting. That was a rude ass, bitchy ass, shit starting question. And I'm telling you, if that had been me, you would have got cussed out. I don't give a fuck. It's like it's none of your goddamn business, bitch, how much money I make. And then you would have sat there with your mouth hanging open looking stupid. Well, that just would have been that. <laughs> you know, these kind of people just get on my nerves. I swear, people just be all kind of nosy, wanting to know all kind of stuff about you. You know, they're telling your ass shit. But who does that? Has guests at their house and just clowns the guests like that. That was so fucking rude. You were just rude to everybody that was in your house, including your husband. You just ought to be ashamed of yourself. What have I done wrong? <laughs> well, you said y'all will split you split up for four months, get ready for four more months of it and possibly forever because he's he going to be through with you. Question number 21. This is a female 30 to 36 age group out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. My husband, <laughs> oh, my husband always stares at our female neighbor. He talks to her husband. They are quite similar and share similar interests. The thing they don't share is age. My husband is much older. He's fit and slim looking, and he's considered handsome by many women. But her husband's in his 30s. He's not so fit and slim, although he is nice looking too. The female neighbor also in her 30s is much fatter than me and doesn't bother too much with her appearance. She seems intelligent and has the same professional job that I had before retiring. My hubby always tries to engage her in conversation if she's in the garden, even if it's obvious that she's very busy. One night he talked to her solidly for over an hour. Nothing wrong in friendly neighborhood chat. However, today he did not notice that I had come out of the house. He was standing looking over at her. She either didn't see him or was ignoring him. He had this silly grin on his face and was saying to himself out loud, oh, she doesn't see me. And then he mouthed sort of a kissing sound to try and alert her to his presence. When he realized I was there, he just said, just being neighborly. What the fuck? Oh, no, I would have busted him. See, this would be time to activate Bop. Because he would have got bopped in them lips that was making them kissy sounds. That's what would have happened. 
And my thing is this, you know, when men start acting like this, you know, a lot of women are like, well, you know, um, I want to, you know, I want him to understand what he's doing. I want this. I want that. No, 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 no. What you do is say you are disrespectful fuck. Not only are you disrespecting me and, and our marriage, you're disrespecting that woman and her husband and their marriage as well. You are fucking embarrassment with your old ass. Stay away from those people and stay away from that fence and stay away from that man's wife. Because, you know, you never know. You know, some people just aren't wrapped too tight. And if that man, you know, is you don't know, you know what I mean? You don't know how his mind is. And if he feels that you're in any way threatening his wife or threatening his marriage, he might unleash the Kraken. And you don't know what is what is going on in some men's mind. They might seem perfectly calm and peaceful and stuff, but you fuck with what they consider to be theirs, their woman or their household, and they will they will kill you. And it won't be no question that your ass will be on the back of a milk cart trying to figure out what happened. Well, I guess they don't put old people on milk carts, but you know what I mean. His ass will be on a missing poster somewhere. And, lady, you will be a widow trying to figure out what to do, waiting them seven years so you could declare him legally dead. And dude will just be like, wow, look at my roses pushing up. They look mighty fine. <laughs> ha, I just don't understand it. You know, so this is the time for you to have a chat with your husband. Say, you don't know what you're doing. Let me just tell you this. Don't be saying nothing if you get a bullet between the eyes from her husband because you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You keep this shit up, we're going to be in divorce court because I'm not going to take this kind of disrespect right where I live. Are you fucking kidding me? The next door neighbors, everybody can see your stupid ass out there doing this? And you just don't have no shame with your old fucked up ass. Nah. Nah, he would, he, would, he would have to get talked about really, really bad. Okay, wow, this went really quick, huh? This is our last question of the night. But these people just irritated me. I'm just kind of like in a sweat. Yeah, you know, but this is the kind of thing. Now she need to activate bop. <laughs> activate bop and bust him outside the head. I don't know. This is just a bit much. I don't know. That's what I think. You know, what would I do if my husband did? I already know what I would do. I would stand right there and cuss him out right in front of everybody. Just like loud and loud talk his ass. You old dried up motherfucker. What you doing looking at that man's wife? Bring your ass in this house and stop that before you start a fucking feud or have that man shooting your ass, dropping you dead right there in the yard. Get your ass in here. That's what he would get from me. Yeah, but he's just, he's so disgraceful. You know what I mean? He's just so disrespectful. That's the kind of thing I think that really irks me the most about these kinds of situations is the disrespect, the total disregard for everybody's feelings but his own. You know, and like I said, you know, you dealing with another man's wife, you better be real, 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 super real careful because your ass could end up, as I said, pushing up roses. I'm trying to figure out what happened, what you, where you made a left turn. Okay, last question of the night for What the Fuck Tuesday, September 1st, 2020 on the Depterism channel. Our famous What the Fuck Tuesday relationship advice column. Glad everybody could join me. Hit that like button before you leave today. And if you are not already a subscriber to this channel, please consider becoming one. Just hit the button. It's painless. Become a subscriber. Hit that instant notification bell, too, so you can get those instant notifications in case you forgot to show up to a show. So here we go. This is from a young woman, 30 to 36, out of Pennsylvania. Dear Miss Deb, I would like your advice on how to handle a man who doesn't seem to get the message after blocking him several times. In December 2019, I was on a dating app and I had matched with a guy in his early 40s. I'm in my early 30s with no children. Okay, so we're like 10 years older. Okay. His profile had clearly stated that he was divorced and a single father to two young boys. I don't mind. I didn't mind the situation since we're both over 30 and have been in previous relationships. We started talking and we hit it off within the first couple of weeks. However, my instincts had told me to do a background check on him and I'm glad I did. As it turns out, he really wasn't divorced, but, quote, separated. He's still legally married to his wife of 11 years. He lied about being divorced. Once I found that out, I deleted all his messages and blocked his cell phone number. Fast forward two months, and he calls me from his house phone, a number I didn't recognize, asking me what had happened. I told him that I wasn't comfortable with us dating anymore since he was still legally married. 
Long story short, I hung up the phone and blocked his house number. Fast forward again to this week, roughly another six months. He sends me a random text message from a Google number basically stating that he was still thinking of me and was available. I deleted the message and blocked that number too. At this point, I'm beginning to get a little aggravated. Any insight as to why this man keeps doing this, no matter how many times I block him? And when I sh- when should I take legal action if necessary? As always, your advice is appreciated. Thank you. First of all, you're being too passive. You know, oh, um, I didn't feel comfortable dating because you're still married. Who going to listen to that polite, low, soft-spoken shit? You know what you're supposed to say? Look, motherfucker, I don't date married men. Take your married and happy ass up out of here. Don't you call me. Don't you text me. L- lose my number. If you call me again, I'm going to file stalking charges on you. That's how you talk to men. Okay, you all, oh, all soft and delicate and blocking that passive aggressive stuff. You blocking people. I mean, but that, I mean, that doesn't really do anything, which you learned after you talk to him from the second time that's when you were supposed to blow his hair back and so in the future too this is what i want you to do i tell everybody this but you obviously missed that memo get your ass a google phone number use it that is the only number that you give out to men the only one okay because you know they can do the screen thing and you can pick it up if you want to you can let it go to voicemail if you want to you can block it as spam if you want to, and it will never ring your phone ever again. You have options with a Google phone number, and every single woman should have one, a Google number, preferably in an area code where you don't live. Okay? That's the best. Well, yeah, she probably is going to have to change her number at this point, but what she could also do is change this number to the Google number and get you a new phone number on your cell phone. That's what you can do. You can do that too. It's Google Fi or something. But anyway, you know, I mean, I'm fuzzy on the details, but you can do that and and do it that way. But, um, yeah, you got to be a little more, a little more overt, a little more assertive than what you're being this message you know that your behavior is very passive and you know anybody is going to keep pushing because you haven't put up any firm boundaries you haven't said anything like really tough and demanding of him you just like kind of avoiding him and so he's going to keep pressing because he's a he's a predator and that's what they do so the only way that you can can get rid of a guy like this you got to come hard and you haven't done that so if you know if he should slide by your barriers again that's when you lose your mind but like in like i said in the meantime you should switch you know get you a google number and you can put this phone on the google line and you can use get you a new number for your cell phone and then any man don't ever give him your real cell phone number until you engaged then you could do that yeah they be tripping they be tripping hard but, you know, they always going to do that. They always want to try to come back and see if you change your mind, if you lonely, if you horny, if you don't have nothing to do and you give them a second chance. I mean, that's just standard issue nigga game. They don't always do that shit. That's, that in itself is nothing new. But what's, what's going to make the difference is how you handle it. And I'm not seeing where you really handled it at all. You just avoided it. And that's not how you have to do men. You got to come hard with them so they know that you mean business. Okay. Right now, he's just like, oh, she's just playing. She's trying to be, you know, play hard to get and stuff like that. That's why it's easy to convince himself of that because you haven't really said anything definitive like get the fuck out of my face. You married fart with them two damn babies, that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's our column for today. If you guys uh, have a question that you would like to submit, look in the show description below and you'll see a link. Just click it to the advice form. You can submit your letters either in written form or you can put them on a short video clip. Nobody's been sending me videos lately. I guess everybody's scared to show their face. But I guess if I was asking some of these dumbass questions, I'd be scared to show my face too. But, you know, it's the kind of thing that um, even though I'm very hard on people, you know, know that I'm coming with, coming at a, from a place of love and concern for you. I am not going to pussyfoot around with you. I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm not going to baby you like your friends and family have been doing. I'm going to tell you what you need to do to get your shit straight because you're fucking up. 
royally. And there's no, we, none of us have time for that. You know, I mean, people are dropping like flies from COVID and cancer and everything else. You know, you never know when it's going to be your tickets going to get punched. You need to live your life in a way that is meaningful and that benefits you and that makes you happy. All the people tonight are living their lives in ways that's making them miserable, unhappy, confused, sad, depressed, all this kind of stuff. We have no time for that. Okay, they, they, life is too short for that nonsense. So when I talk to you, I'm talking to you in a way to, to get your attention, to pull you up short, to make you look at yourself in a way that probably nobody else has because I will straight tell you, you're doing some dumb shit right now. You know, and everybody's like, oh, my God, you're so mean. You say you just talk to people all kinds of crazy. But you know what? That's what they need. They don't need that cool by y'all. Oh, well, you know, maybe you should think about it, you know. Oh, this and that. All that old soft talk y'all do because you they friends, they mama, they sisters, and you have a vested interest in their feelings. I don't give a fuck. You wrote me, okay, to ask me my opinion on your fucked up situation. So I'm telling you what you need to do to fix it. Now, you don't have to listen. That's, of course, that's your red wagon. But since you asked me, I'm going to tell you. And that's just how it is. Communicate. <laughs> communicate don't do nothing so we will be back on friday with our next to last dnn the following friday is the last one uh for this season and then we'll be moving on to something else i don't know what i'm gonna put in its place but we'll figure out something and um and then go from there i will also be doing some more interviews from prison women who dated men who are convicts and I'm going to be doing some putting together this women's uh, panel that will be taking place on in early September. So I got a lot of stuff on the pike coming down for real interest. Hit that subscription button, people. Become a part of this scene here. It will be a good time for all. This is Deb Cooper. I'll talk to you real, real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>